Kobe. That's 24. Welcome to 2024. Kobe. That's right. 23 was MJ. And boy, Kobe. I should start off that way. You know, every time I come on right now, it's 24. That 24, 2 and 4. I got that right because I was afraid probably I did like this and this. I'm not all that coordinated nowadays. Something is off with me. So, Kobe. See, I went 23. Let's try that again. Kobe. I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, it's 24. 23, 2023 was definitely MJ. Definitely MJ. On some bullshit. And boy, did I feel like Steve Kerr. Just getting punched in the eye. Speaking of Steve Kerr. Hmm. Okay, so fans definitely questioning Steve Kerr right now. Let me not speak on behalf of players because I just don't know what players are thinking right now. You know, that's their boy. I'm talking about the core players. That's their dude right there. They've been through a lot of ish together. That's their dude. But definitely the new, definitely the new guys are questioning Steve Kerr. I would be too. I would be too if I was Jonathan Kaminga. If I was Moses Moody. Moses Moody is bullet. But a lot of DNPs, a lot of DNPs just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to a lot of fans. But then again, we are fans. We're not the coaches. Maybe they know something we do not know. But standing from where I'm standing and the little knowledge of basketball that I have, I'll say little knowledge of basketball because I've definitely not played at that level, nor have I coached at that level. So... And that's a really high level right there. There's a lot of things that are happening behind the scene we just don't know. We just don't know. I could sit over here and speculate. And that's what I'm doing. I'm speculating with the little knowledge that I have. And boy, do I have a lot to say about Steve Kerr from where I'm standing. But am I going to talk about Steve Kerr today? That's for another video because we're not going to make that video today. Today, Kobe. <laughs> That's going to be my thing, at least for the beginning of the year. Kobe, just just whenever I need like some kind of, you know, I'm out of words or something like that. Just Kobe, 24. Kobe. Oh, now it works. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to love talking about the Lakers. You got to love talking about the Warriors. You got to love talking about Phoenix Suns. Why? Because they have some of the best players out there. Players that have been tried and tried and tried. And usually they come out on top. All right. LeBron James, Stephen Curry, KD, your favorite hooper's favorite hooper. Even though he has made some questionable decisions, I don't want to say lately, it's been a while now, but he's still KD. That's still KD. So we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And that's why we constantly keep talking about the Lakers, the Warriors, and Phoenix Suns. That's why we get upset about the Warriors, the Lakers, and Phoenix Suns. Because some of these teams are just not playing right, right now. You're frustrated. I'm frustrated. A lot of people are frustrated. But we know they're better. We know they're better than their record right now. We know those players just have it in them to wheel their teams to that next level. Will they do it this season? That's why we sit back here and we just watch them. Watch them and wait for that to happen. And sometimes it never happens. <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't happen. But usually it does happen. And out of those three teams or those three players, I bet you two of them will wheel their teams to go deep into the playoffs. I bet you that. I can bet you that. Bet you it's going to happen. And I bet you one of those teams is going to make it all the way to the conference finals. You're going to be sitting at the end of the season watching and you're going to be like, that dude did say that. He did. He did say it because we all know. I mean, this is not me being Nostradamus or anything like that. We just know these guys usually deliver and what's happening right now just does not make sense to a lot of people. That's why a lot of people are tripping. We can talk basketball and we can get down to the X's and O's and we can break it down. And I can tell you some of the stuff. Like I said, I have little knowledge from where I'm sitting, but I do understand a couple of things here and there. And I can tell you why. There's a lot of redundancy with the Warriors, with the Lakers. The Lakers can't shoot. And now the Warriors can't shoot also. 
I mean, let's not get into the nitty gritty because this video is not about that. This video is really about why we keep talking about these teams and why they're so interesting. They're very interesting because they have some very interesting players, just really good players that usually deliver. And that's why we constantly keep talking about them. It's not that the league is constantly pushing them, but it's just we are drawn, compelled to watching these players play. And it's great. I love it. I watch it. I get upset. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And so many other people, there's so many other fans. And that's why we compel because they just, and then sometimes they just amaze us. Just amaze us. So I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for LeBron. I'm still waiting for Steph. I'm still waiting for KD to do something. And we're going to be like, ah, oh my God. And then you do have those teams that just play so great. And when it's time, they just fold. Celtics. <laughs> Celtics fans are not going to be happy with me, but hey, it is what it is. It's not me. The Celtics play like James Harden. Houston's James Harden. Incredible player. That dude was dropping 65, 70, I don't know, just left and right. One time, I bet you scored like 500 points. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know. It just, I don't know if that was, I, but you understand what I'm saying? Just a lot of points. He just scored a lot of points. But then in the playoffs, this man just disappears. Kind of like the boss, the Boston Celtics. They tend to do the same thing, like play really great during the regular season. And then they just, no, not so great during the postseason. I mean, they made it to the finals not too long ago and they got beat by the Warriors. See what I'm talking about? The Warriors were not so great. The season before that, they were terrible. And then the next season, Stephen Curry did his thing. And before you know it, they got a chip. And the Celtics were great, went all the way to the finals. And guess what happened? They folded. They folded. This is what I'm talking about. And this is what we wait and see. We can look at the Sixers. The Sixers got what? He was a uh, regular season MVP, Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid, not too long ago. But what is he doing right now? He is pulling another James Harden comparison. This man bowls during the regular season. Or should I say this man just searches for fouls constantly, man. I try to watch the Sixers, man. I'm sorry. I can't. I love the Sixers, but I can't. I can't do it. Man, this guy just goes out there. Those are not even basketball moves. Those are just moves to get fouls. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And it's not like he can't play. This dude can ball. This dude can play. Why are you constantly just searching for fouls? You know they're not going to work in the, in the postseason. I blame the NBA. I don't know why they do that during the regular season. And then they don't do that in the postseason. Why not just keep it consistent? Keep it consistent. So some of these players will stop doing it. Because you get used to that. 82 games and then all of a sudden you got to switch. You understand what I'm saying? It's really difficult. Y'all are making it really difficult for Embiid. And Embiid just wants to get another MVP and then chill at home and just relax during the postseason because he knows all those fouls that he usually gets he's not going to get and things are just going to be different. All right, Sixers fans are also not going to be happy with me, but I'm also a fan. I love the Sixers. I love the Sixers. And the Bucks. Let's talk about the Bucks. The Bucks decided to sacrifice their defense to get more offense, but... I think they just sacrificed everything. Because to me, great defense is great offense. When you have great defense, you definitely have a pretty good offense, at least. Because you know you're not going against set defense all the time. Because your defense is so great, you're going to get a lot of fast breaks. You're going to get some easy buckets. And you're not going to have to go against a set defense every possession. You understand what I'm saying? So that means your percentage is going to go up because you're going to get easy buckets. And the Bucks decided to do the opposite. So they got Dame, but then they got, they lost. They lost Holiday. And their defense is not the same. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. And now the Bucks are just not clicking like the way they were clicking. I mean, they have a pretty good record, but I just don't trust them in the postseason. Maybe things will change and maybe we'll see something. But as of right now, I still feel like the next champion is going to come from the West. And boy, if one of those teams I was talking about, the Lakers, Phoenix Suns, or the Warriors, 
I don't know about Phoenix, <laughs> but one of those guys, if they make it to the finals, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I know it's going to be very difficult because we have teams such as the Nuggets. Nuggets are a really good team. The Nuggets, we're talking about redundancy. It's like they have no redundancy. Every player is just different. And every player brings something to the table that the team needs. It's a really good team. The Nuggets are just a really good team. And I give them props. I give the Nuggets all the props they deserve. I let them go out there and do their thing. Right now, I'm supporting some of the new guys. The new guys I am supporting, we're talking about SGA and Chet. Ooh, you gotta love OKC. I love OKC. I love Sacramento. The Sacramento Kings are just fun to watch. And the magic. Yes, Orlando Magic. I'm talking about Orlando Magic. Yes, they're definitely showing some magic right now. And I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. Even though they're struggling, they've been struggling lately. The past five games have not been all that great. But all in all, I feel like they're a fun team to watch. Play great defense. I mean, their shooting is not the best, even though they had a great shooting night against the Sacramento Kings. That was a beautiful game. The Sacramento Kings playing against the, um, the Sacramento Kings playing against Orlando Magic. Yeah, it was a beautiful game. It's two of the young teams that I love watching. Game went to double overtime. Great game. Sacramento Kings came on top. I mean, they just executed pretty good at the end. They did their thing. Orlando, Orlando. Let's not go into details. We're not talking X's and O's. I was just about to do that. So let's not talk about that. I'm just excited. And if you're not watching those young teams do that, because those teams definitely in the near future will be making noise. But as of right now, I keep saying we complain about the Lakers. We complain about the Warriors. We complain about Phoenix Suns. But then we go to bed, wake up in the morning, and we do the same thing. Start complaining about those teams again. Why? because they have that much potential. Those players are known to do the impossible. And we're constantly waiting to see the impossible happen. So yes, tonight the Nuggets are playing against the Warriors. That's gonna be a fun match. I predict the Warriors winning this one. They've lost five times to the Nuggets. Two of my teams have obviously when the Warriors play against the Nuggets, I'm rooting for the Warriors. Y'all might see me after the game. We're about to watch that game. I'll see you guys later.